Nick and I were you know, talking and, and growing up together, stuff, we always said we wanted to do a company together. We didn't know what the company was going to be. It was actually, we wanted to do computer games, which is ironic because that's sort of 10 years later what we eventually had, or, or planning on, on getting into. And we wanted to do something together. Um, and uh, he had, you know, sort of some spare money. Um, uh, design concept was also going through a bit of a restructuring um, uh, phase. Um, and we decided that it's sort of now or never to do it. So I quit my job. Uh, we um, sort of worked out, I think we had about three months worth of salary to like split between the two of us to actually go. Um, and we started the company in his kitchen because we couldn't afford anything else. And uh, instead of taking the 13th check from my uh, uh, company design concept, I took the computer that I was actually working on. Um, and that's how we sort of started our, uh, started our company, using our existing clients that I had, um, uh, which unfortunately I've lost contact with quite a few of them, obviously working full time at design concept. Um, and uh, yeah, we slowly sort of started building up a portfolio and uh, building up a client base again. And yeah, that was sort of 10 years ago. We went into a market that we knew, but that was very much non-existent in South Africa at the time. Um, the 3D illustration market, uh, it was um, very, very large uh, overseas. Uh, some of the companies, I think Spine 3D has something like 200 employees. I think Crystal uh, Dynamics had something like one and a half thousand. It's a big uh, studio in, in China. But in South Africa, um, you had freelancers that were doing 2D hand illustrations. And then I think there was one other company in Durban called Dimension Modeling. Um, but that was it. So we sort of went in and we actually completely, um, I'm not going to say pulled the world over people's eyes, but we sort of made it as though we'd been in the industry for you know, 10 years and you know, and to the point where um, the phone would ring and I would be in the background moving papers around while Nick was on the phone to make it sound like there were actually more people in the office. We had, we had uh, 702 on because 702, if you listen in the background, it just sounds like people are talking. Um, and uh, all of our meetings that we had were sort of off-site at our client offices, which is also something that um, a lot of the, uh, the art companies at that point would, like advertising companies, you, you go to the advertising company to their office and you have the meeting there. Um, and we were sort of like, no, you know, we're going to come to your office and that sort of thing. And the truth is that because we didn't actually have an office, but um, that actually became a core uh, proponent of our business, that we go to the client offices, we go to their spaces and we work within their schedules. And um, that we sort of like built our company around being able to literally go to people's offices, sit with them, do what we need to actually do with them. And to this day, even though now we've got offices and boardrooms and the rest of it, um, we don't really have meetings at our studio. Um, I can't think of the actual date when it was that we hit our, our sort of very first um, million that we made. Um, but uh, I think we were actually kind of like we went out to dinner um, and we were just, Nick was like, oh, by the way, you know, we sort of made our first million. The thing is that it sounds like a massive amount of money, but then you sort of look at all your costs it took you to actually make that first million. And this is like, this isn't a first million of profit, this is the first million of I uh, just suddenly hit my sort of first, um, you know, like a, a, a million rand. Um, it was quite a surreal experience, uh, especially considering the fact that I thought it would be bigger like as a personal sort of thing but um, I don't know if it's just a case with Nick and I where we sort of like you know we your, your first goal is obviously to get that first win but when you actually get there you sort of like well you know the next million is going to be even better you know and then you sort of uh, as you get closer there it's like well, you know five million is going to be even better and you sort of like you build your way up uh, as you go and um, uh, it was a very very cool experience um, to actually get it. Uh, I, the thing is that I still don't think we actually saw it because it's just becomes numbers on a screen which is highly depressing because you think that you have all this money and then it's just there and then of course we had to pay tax on it and that was a shot to the gut <laughs> you know the, the, i think the the best part about making a, an amount of money like that is you prove to yourself that you can do it and it sort of it makes the next one less daunting and it makes the less one i'm not going to say easier because it just gets harder as you go along but it's sort of like it's um it almost becomes like a game and like a challenge to then sort of get there and the fact that you know that you can get to that first one makes the next one more fun to actually get to and you sort of you start to just kind of like um, see the forest for the trees essentially you know you're so focused on this one thing and then when you get there sort of like you realize that you didn't die in doing it it, it wasn't a, a soul crushing horrible experience it was a lot of fun to actually get there so you sort of like you can sort of see the goal in the distance but it's not as hazy as it used to be it's sort of a little bit clearer and as you move, move forward it becomes clearer and clearer and more and more fun to actually make uh, I think it was about 
three years or so in our first, um, uh, when, when we started our company Burn before we got to our first um, sort of a large um, landmark, um, which was a, a million rand. Um, it might be less, but I'm not, not certain about the actual sort of dates of it. Um, and then the, the, in comparison, the Kickstarter million took us 22 days, I think, to actually hit, hit a million on, on Kickstarter. Um, so to go from three years to 22 days is a pretty sort of like a cool um, experience. Um, but uh, again, I think it was sort of the fact that because we'd done it, we knew that we could do it. Uh, which sounds silly and it sounds maybe like, I'm not going to say overconfident, but you do sort of get a bit of uh, like a confidence boost when you actually get there. Um, hitting that first uh, $100,000 on Kickstarter was a, a major relief off my shoulders because it took us four months to actually plan the campaign. It, was, it wasn't a case of sort of, um, uh, you know, we're going to do it and the million's going to come in and we're going to sit back and relax. It was a case of it took four months of planning and three years of developing this product to get to a point where we could actually make a million in 22 days or 23 days, whatever it was. Um, it was a, it, it was also a very cool experience because basically it's um, uh, it happened a lot faster than the first one. You know, when you sort of you take an experience and you you stretch it out over, you know, <coughs> a, a ten year period or a three year period, or a two year period, and you take that over and you condense it down to this like one insane sprint. Um, it's a, it's a very draining sort of thing, but um, you kind of get that euphoric rush of that very first time that you sort of made money. Uh, you know, whether it was, yeah, as a kid, I mean, I used to um, house at people's houses and charge them, I think it was like 20 rand to walk their dog and that sort of thing. Um, and you sort of, you get that same kind of rush of, uh, um, you know, I did it and I can actually do it. And again, it sort of gives you the, well, gave us the confidence to go forward with the project, which is the game to actually look at, to say, well, people are interested in this, you know, people actually want this. So it gives you a boost to actually be able to, again, sort of see the finish line. It's a lot clearer than it actually was previously. If it goes down to where we did our very first company, basically we sort of found a, um, a niche market and we exploited it. Um, uh, uh, Nick always says that it's a case of scratching your own itch. So it's um, find something that you do that you do very well, do it very well and charge money for it. And that's honestly the, the absolute best way to actually go, go forward. Um, don't avoid the tax man because you will get bitten. And, if you, when you, and you, you want to get bitten when you're making small amounts, you don't want to get bitten when you're making big amounts. Um, hire a good accountant, definitely hire a good accountant. Um, so I think what other have good hair, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Have confidence in your ideas and have confidence going forward because if you doubt yourself, someone else isn't going to invest in your idea. Um, you have to be confident. Like I said, we sort of told people that we were this massive company. Um, and while I had been doing it for about three years before we actually started Burn, um, I didn't tell people that I'd been working in like a small company. It was the fact that I've been in this industry since its beginning and that sort of thing. So you've got to have confidence in your idea and have confidence moving forward because if you want people to invest their hard-earned money in an idea of you, whether it's sort of investing money from the point of like a Kickstarter campaign or whether it's literally just buying your product or investing in your, your time and your services, you have to be confident. Um, and if you're not confident, just fake it because you will get there. You know, if, if it's an idea that you that, that you've decided that you're going to be that you're going to put it forward, you will get there. 